Hello everyone, Halsey Lion here. Since this is my first proper video for 2020, let me say to you all, Happy New Year! In my announcement I said I'll be taking it easy for about one month, but that doesn't mean the videos will stop. As such, today I bring you another character build for the Outer Worlds. So far I've given you a heavy weapons expert and a people person, and today I present to you an antithesis to both. The Praetorian, a solo, melee weapon fanatic whose favorite combat technique is charging his enemies and flattening them beneath his furious swings. I've chosen to work on a melee build because I'm currently doing a Caesar's Legion playthrough in Fallout New Vegas, as a matter of fact, that's where the inspiration for today's build came from. That and Krieg the Psycho from Borderlands. Because I've given plenty of context in my previous guides, today we'll just jump straight into the subject. All you need to understand about the Praetorian is that unlike his New Vegas counterparts, he has an absolute disdain towards slavery. But compared to the practices of corporations throughout the outer worlds, slavery is honest, because a slave knows his place in the world, whereas the indentured servant believes he is free. The slave resents his captor, the serf praises his owners as liberators. All the Praetorian wants to do is demolish the whole corporate machine from its very foundations. No questions asked. First of all, we gotta lay the foundation of this build by selecting the proper attributes we will make use of. In Supernova, it's hard to survive as a jack of all trades. You cannot choose a half measure and you have to go all in. For this reason, strength is maximized for the increased melee damage. Dexterity is also maximized because increased swing speed translates to even more damage. The Praetorian hates slavery because he himself grew up as a slave to a group of outlaws. Therefore, his only education were the beatings he was subjected to by his captors. And as a result, his intelligence is limited. When you work hard every day, you tend to focus on completing your tasks and as such you don't get to pay too much attention to your surroundings. Perception is also decreased. Under those conditions, the Praetorian never got to develop his social skills. Charm is below average. However, those conditions created a person with immense temperament. This will help the Praetorian recover from the wounds suffered in battle, making him tankier. As for the skills we'll boost in character creation, well, that's simple. Melee and defense. These are the main skills we will level up as we progress through the game. Because of the unbalanced attribute setup, some of our skills are 0, others are 15. I recommend that you ignore the level 0 skills, while at the same time putting 5 points to raise the others from 15 to 20. This ought to bring some measure of balance to our warrior. As for the aptitude you should pick, I'll leave it up to you. I personally prefer one that slightly improves one of the damage resistances. The next aspect that defines the build is the choice of perks, so let's quickly discuss the recommended order for these to be assigned. If we didn't play on Supernova, I'd suggest Lone Wolf as your first perk, but it will have to be picked second after Toughness. You are going to get shot a lot as a melee weapon user, you need the health. Third in importance is Cheetah. Speed is key when charging a gun-wielding enemy. At this point I usually recommend Pack Mule, but we have plenty of strength to not worry about carry capacity for a while. So this leaves a point open for something more useful, such as Resilient, which improves your armor rating. In Tier 1 I would also recommend High Maintenance, because from what I've noticed, even pristine melee weapons degrade quite rapidly, so you need to keep your blade sharpened in order to have any chance in combat. You can feel free to replace these last two perks with the ones improving time dilation, if you think you're better served by that mechanic. On to Tier 2, we don't have a lot of perks that are useful here. Harvester, Speed Demon and Reaper are the only ones that truly add some utility to the melee combat style, so pick them in that exact order. Next two perks can be whichever you think are more useful. My personal recommendations are Snake Oil Salesman and another tier 1 perk, Pack Mule, which we skipped earlier. Alternatively, if you choose to wield the Prismatic Hammer, you can greatly increase its damage by 50% with Weird Science. If the Prismatic Hammer isn't your style and you prefer a one-handed science weapon, you can find the Mandibular Rearranger on Scylla right around this zone. Now for tier 3, the most important perk for a melee warrior is Tit for Tat for the healing it gives as you hack away pieces of your enemies. Next up in priority you can take Armor Master, Revenge, Last Stand and if you're using one of the science weapons, take Wild Science to further increase its damage output. I nearly forgot to mention the second most important perk in tier 3, Tactical Master, which makes you even faster in combat. 
You can get more perk points by accepting flaws, but the melee playstyle carries a high risk. So I can't recommend any flaws other than acrophobia, food addiction and drug addiction. There are ways to offset all of these flaws so they don't hinder you in combat. Other phobias and damage vulnerabilities may very well kill you if you pick them. Now that I think about it, you can feel free to take corrosive weakness as well, because the only enemies dealing acid damage are raptidons, which are only found on Monarch and around Roseway. You should still be careful if you take this one. Now it's time to discuss skill progression in greater detail. Because your melee and defense skills are good enough early on, your first priority is to put 5 points into every skill you see at level 15 to balance out your character. Make an exception for the leadership skills and ignore them completely because the lone wolf perk we've just taken is incompatible with companionship. You can feel free to recruit companions and you can even do their missions but don't take them in combat. If you do, just tell them to stay away from the fighting as you do everything yourself without the damage bonus offered by the lone wolf perk. Look, if you run into a tough combat situation and your companions could get killed, just tell them to skedaddle back to the ship. After most of your skills sit nicely at level 20, your first priority is to choose your preferred weapon type and increase its corresponding skill to 60. If you plan on using the Prismatic Hammer, you obviously have to increase the two-handed weapon skill. But the most important skill milestone we need for this build is found at level 80 of Dodge, for the 50% melee damage increase you get after dodging. You can leap at an enemy, smack him, dodge an attack, slap him again and you can keep that going until there's no more enemies. We'll further discuss dodging in the tactics section of this guide. The next best skill milestone to unlock is at level 100 of block. The biggest problem with this one is that you have to know how to use the perfect block mechanic and I personally didn't play melee long enough to get that committed to muscle memory. Especially because enemies can alternate between fast strikes and slow slams and you may get bamboozled, fail your perfect block and find yourself reloading your latest save. If you have the confidence that you can perform the perfect block reliably, this one is your next priority, otherwise you're better off ignoring the block skill altogether. One more problem with the block skill is that you can only perform the perfect block against melee attackers and at least half of your enemies have ranged attacks. Perhaps you're better off maximizing your chosen melee skill or even maximizing medicine or science to diversify your tactics besides just charging and bashing. The choice is up to you, what I'm trying to say is that block on this build is kind of redundant, because when you're blocking, you're not attacking. Alright, we've spoken enough about character development, now let's talk about the tactics we will use. This is kind of a funny subject, because you can't really use the word tactics in this context. Running around like a headless chicken, dodging impulsively and swinging my blade around like a madman can hardly qualify as a tactic, but here are my tips to surviving combat. The most important tactic is the same one I've repeated in all of my videos. Use the time dilation hit effects. They also apply to melee weapons once your skills are at level 40. Which they are, if you've selected the same attributes and skills that I've recommended. If a group of enemies is surrounding you, it might be time to use a gun instead to cripple their legs and make them easier targets or maim their arms to make them deal less damage. It's a bit difficult to target specific body parts with a melee weapon, especially if you're swinging recklessly. I guess you could hit the head of an enemy with an overhead power attack if you try hard enough, but honestly this power attack is only good when you attack from stealth, because it is rather slow to charge. The sweep on the other hand is way faster and deals the same damage in addition to hitting all enemies in front of you. If you didn't read the tooltips, you may perform this sweep by holding the attack button after you do a quick melee strike. This next tactic might be a bit weird for a melee build, but unfortunately on Supernova you cannot rely entirely on close combat weapons. Sometimes you gotta use firearms. The Praetorian hates guns, but you know what he hates even more? Dying. Luckily our handguns and heavy weapons can easily reach level 20, and when faced with a tough enemy such as a primal behemoth, it's best to switch to one of these and pepper him with bullets. It's not impossible to best the behemoth in melee combat, but if you get hit by his slam and get a concussion, it will become impossible as your swing speed is halved. The only weapon that is still somewhat good after a concussion is the LMG, you can find a reliable one in this primal nest in Emerald Vale. Other primals can even maim you, reducing your damage, but a 30% reduction isn't that bad. Here's a little something that I just noticed as I was editing the video. Normally, the overhead power attack is rather slow to charge, but when suffering from a concussion, I've seen that it charges at least twice as quick, hitting even faster than a regular attack. Here's the power attack normally, and here it is after a concussion. 
Maybe this is just a false impression I have. You be the judge. Anyway, if negative status effects make it hard for you to perform in combat, you know what to do. You just go to your ship and have a nap. To prevent any misunderstanding, let me make this absolutely clear. As a Praetorian, you will mostly use melee, but in the early stages you will complement this playstyle with guns when you absolutely have to, such as being affected by a concussion while swarmed by primals, or when a Marauder ringleader is too far away and there's no cover and your health is low. In the first case, we use the LMG for its fast fire rate and ability to dish out damage from a safe distance. In the second, we can activate time dilation and use the pistol to cripple the Marauder's leg, giving us a brief moment to heal and safely close the distance and beat our foe with a stick. Once we level up dodge to 80 and obtain a good melee weapon, we won't need to rely on firearms as much. The Praetorian also dislikes sneaking, preferring to charge into combat, but he is not impulsive. If the situation demands it, he will be quietly executing enemies from the shadows. So here's a tip that makes melee sneak attacks less tedious. You can dodge while sneaking and it will draw some attention to you, but if you can blindsend an enemy, you can teleport behind him with a leap, charge up a heavy and easily kill him before he even knows what's going on. You can even charge up a heavy attack and then leap behind your target and unleash it. Now that we're talking about dodging, you may wonder why we have this skill at 80 and we don't maximize it. Well, level 100 of dodge is superfluous. As I've said, you can't accurately hit weak spots with a melee weapon, so you're better off investing your points into a more useful skill. As for your other defensive technique, blocking, its only tangible benefit is the armor bonus it offers while wielding a melee weapon. It's also good to know that you can hold block to reduce damage from all sources, including ranged attacks. With that said, I highly recommend that you don't try to block Raptidon or Manticween projectiles, as they are lethal. If you can dodge a ranged attack, do it, your high skill offers plenty of mobility, which can further be improved by the Leaper Injector's armor mod. If you find it anywhere. My last piece of advice is to abuse the consumables in this game. If you have a feeling that your next encounter is going to be dangerous, eat a can of Saltuna and a bunch of nanners, drink a bottle of plain and pure water and inject some Adrena time. You'll make short work of your enemies under the influence of all those substances. Now, to recap all of these tactics, let me briefly describe how combat usually goes. First of all, if I sense the fight will be tough, I buff myself up with the consumables as I've just described. Then, I try to stealthily position myself behind an enemy and while advancing, I charge up a heavy attack. When the time is right, I double tap my dodge button to leap behind him and instantly release my overhead strike. I then start maniacally dodging left and right, swinging constantly with an occasional power attack thrown in just to spice things up. If I feel up to it, I even try to perform a perfect block, but it's usually better to just keep swinging. If my health is getting low, I use my speed to run away from the fight and heal myself with the inhaler and just as fast I return into combat. Unless I'm fighting an army with automatic weapons, if that's the case I get myself to cover as fast as I can and I try to take out my enemies one by one. But things start getting interesting if I fight a Manti Queen or a Raptidon Colossus, because those beasts have a lot of damage. When faced with those monsters I pull out the vermin, knock them out and do my dodging and swinging at them till they stop moving. On very rare occasions I also switched to my LMG, but I found myself only using that one at low levels, before my melee skills truly started shining. You can still make use of the LMG to cripple a large amount of enemies to prevent them from running away, makes them easier to catch. And that's pretty much it for combat tricks, I've not yet faced a challenge that I can't overcome with these tactics. Maybe the final boss of this game will prove me wrong. Anyway, unlike the Corporate, who is a sniper with companions, the Praetorian is the complete opposite. A lone melee warrior. But that doesn't mean we'll completely disregard the knowledge shared in the Corporate episode or the Primer, because some of that info can be applied to the Praetorian as well, especially the idea of the three gameplay phases. With today's build you don't need to follow the three phases, but if you do, you can play through phase 1 as a steely ninja and acquire some bits, Switch to phase 2 when you have the skill points needed to get science to 100, and when your arsenal is ready, finally switch to phase 3, where you walk the path of the Praetorian. I personally don't bother with those 3 stages for every build, but if you think you can use that knowledge to your advantage, I don't see why you shan't. Before we bring this video to an end, let me share a couple of locations for some good melee weapons. The first proper weapon you can obtain in Emerald Vale is the Shock Stick. All you need to do to get this one is completing Ludwig Miller's questline. You know, the one with the robots. If you make this one your priority, you can get it done within 10 minutes. 
The next best weapon is the prismatic hammer, and you can find it on the groundbreaker. But if you'd rather use a one-handed weapon, you can find a really good plasma cutter in the sewers of Byzantium, and for that, you will need to lie to Udom about the whereabouts of Phineas Wells and, uh, <clears throat> obtain his board seal from Gladys. Then you have a chat with Sophia Akande, after which you're left to run loose in the city of Byzantium. Here is the entrance to the sewers. Then you take these stairs to your right, turn right yet again, and when you see this parcel service sign, head into the room. The ionized paper knife is inside, and it is an amazing weapon. Just be careful with the automechanicals inside, as they can overwhelm you. To survive this encounter, I activated time dilation and crippled each of them, to buy a bit of time to run in, grab the plasma cutter, and run out. This one is a level 20 weapon and I obtained it at level 10 and since then I've just melted everything in my path with just a couple of swings. Plasma doesn't work against everything, especially not against these mantasaurs, so for them we will need to use another damage type. Fortunately you can find a shock button mark 2 right in this building near the Cascadia landing pad. In this zone you will also find the vermin revolver which can be used to knock out super tough enemies before you can charge in and pummel them into oblivion. The last piece of equipment that I recommend is the Elite Troop Armor Gold purchased from the CMP vending machines. Alright, have I missed anything? I'm under the impression that I've said everything that needed to be said, but I feel like I'm forgetting something. Hmm, perhaps a backstory? I'm not very good at writing those, and because I don't have any flair when it comes to writing, I'll just give you a brief summary of his backstory. Even in this day and age, human trafficking and modern slavery are daily realities for some people, who have been captured by various gangs, cartels and mafias. This is how the story of the Praetorian begins as well, because his mother was captured by one such gang while she was pregnant. And Lucius was born into slavery, performing menial tasks for his captors until he grew up. As a teenager, he would perform a more difficult labor for the gang, and not before long, he was going to find himself fighting for his life for the entertainment of his captors in one of their combat arenas. He barely survived his first experience in the arena, but eventually he would be thrown in there to fight again and again. When the gang realized his talent for violence, they decided to make use of those abilities by enlisting him as a simple slave in their many organized arena fights, with other gangs and underworld enthusiasts. This gang would bet heavy money on their slave, while others would bet on the rational choice. Of course, nothing could face the Praetorian in battle, and the gang made a lot of money this way. With each victory, the Praetorian grew more confident, and when the time was right, he planned his escape. The TV was his only contact with the outside world, and on the TV he noticed advertisements promising a new beginning in the Halcyon colony. When time came for the hope to depart, the Praetorian killed his captors, stole their money from their safe, and booked passage towards the Halcyon colony. He doesn't yet know the situation in the outer worlds, but he will eventually learn that corporations practice legally sanctioned slavery, and for that reason, his sole mission is to burn the corporate board to the ground. After stampeding those who stand in his way, of course. And that was all the Praetorian shared about his story. Again, melee doesn't always work on the supernova difficulty, but this build should work pretty damn well at least 60% of the time. I'll just be honest, I needed to have a melee build in my collection of videos for the Outer world, so yeah, that's the best I can do for now. I hope you enjoyed this. Well, we're done for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.